There are over 13,000 cards for duelists to create the perfect deck. Many of those cards made their very first appearance in the anime. But for some, they would never cross the bridge to the physical card game. Have these cards been lost to time, or are they far too powerful to introduce to today's game? The time has come to answer these questions. Sartorius, or as known in the original Japanese anime, Seo Tacoma, living proof that cults work perfectly for the basis of an anime arc, and despite the crimes committed against Bastion's character, it remains my favorite arc in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. For such a powerful character, Sartorius' signature Arcana Force deck was anything but. Granted, controlling the powers of Destiny is a major power creep for any user of this deck. It's no secret that the Arcana Force archetype is missing several members of the major arcana that they are based on, some of which remain exclusive to the anime, which we'll be covering this week, and some that never touched the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise in any way. Let's see what Destiny has in store for us. Starting with Sartorius' first monster, Arcana Force 8, The Strength, a level 5 light fairy effect monster with 1800 attack and defense. And just like the Arcana Force monsters we know of, it has a coin flip upon summon effect with a different result for heads and tails. If heads, you get to take control of one monster your opponent controls. If tails, your opponent takes control of all other monsters you control. Also like the Arcana Force cards of the physical game, one of the effects severely outweighs any advantage garnered by the opposite effect, and we'll see this become a nonsensical pattern in even the non-Arcana Force cards in Sartorius's catalog. Next is Arcana Force 12, The Hangman, a level 6 light fairy effect monster with 2200 attack and defense with a standard coin flip effect. If heads on a mandatory soft once per turn, destroy one monster you control and inflict damage to yourself equal to that monster's attack. If tails, destroy one monster your opponent controls and inflict damage to them equal to that monster's attack, also a mandatory soft once per turn. Could be worse on both fronts, I suppose. The mandatory destruction is annoying, to say the least, especially on the heads effect, meaning that you could be forced to blow up the hangman. But I guess that would also be my first choice, just so I don't have to destroy anything else of mine. But that's all irrelevant, because this is not the kind of effect that I want to see on a tribute monster. Let's put away the coins for a bit and look at more Arcana Force support. Maybe there's something in there that would make them a tier 1 powerhouse in the modern game. Arcanatic Doom Scythe is a normal spell with a foolish burial effect for any one Arcana Force monster, and during this turn, when an opponent's monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, your opponent takes damage equal to the attack of the destroyed monster. I like Foolish Burial, so I'm gonna say that I like this card too. Does it actually work in Arcana Force? Well, not really. The only possible use that I could find in a dedicated build would be milling a different Arcana Force monster than one you control, to then banish from Grave with Arcana Call to gain that monster's effect. This is so horribly inconsistent that I'd have my doubts if Sartorius himself said he could make it happen. Not as though there are many good Arcana Force monsters to choose from for milling, so I'm just going to ignore this one. Divination of Fate is a normal spell card that can only be activated during your main phase 2 if a monster you control did not destroy an opponent's monster by battle this turn. Special summon one level 4 or lower Arcana Force monster from your hand. This is far more feasible than Doom Scythe. Bash the Fool into literally any monster your opponent controls, and because it won't be destroyed by battle and won't destroy the opponent's monster, you get a freebie from the hand. It's an A-plus compared to everything else thus far, but can we keep this power level going? Magician Scales is a normal spell card, and as cost you must tribute one Arcana Force monster. Add one spell card from your deck to your hand. Yeah, that's amazing. Any spell card? Normally you have to lose a limb for that kind of advantage. It's more so just funny that there isn't a single Arcana Force spell card that you'd want to grab with this, so it's prime for degenerate combo decks. But if that's what it takes for Arcana Force to be good, so be it. Reverse Reborn is an equipped spell card that acts as a premature burial for the deck, special summoning an Arcana Force monster from your graveyard and equipping it with this card. It also gains its Tails effect and is destroyed if Reverse Reborn is destroyed. It combos a lot better with Doom Scythe than Arcana Call could ever dream of, and there are some fairly decent targets to send and subsequently revive with Reverse Reborn. Those being the Fiend, which can destroy all monsters on the field when battling, the Fool, which negates your opponent's card effects that target it, 
And well, that's, that's it. But seeing two viable options is more than I would ever have given credit for. The tier 1 comment about these Arcana Force cards was mostly satirical, but I'm kind of eating my words. These cards are great. Sowing of the Fool is a continuous spell card with the soft once per turn effect in which you can target one face-up Arcana Force monster you control, toss a coin, and apply the appropriate effect. If heads, mill one card from the top of your deck for each multiple of 300 attack the targeted monster has. If tails, mill one card from the top of your opponent's deck for each multiple of 300 attack the targeted monster has. Did somebody say Arcana Lightsworn? At most, you could mill 13 cards off your opponent's deck while controlling either of the Arcana Force X monsters. Needleworm could never. Speaking of the EX monsters, the Light Roller has its own anime exclusive support card in the Skylord, a continuous spell card that can only be activated while there is a level 7 or higher Arcana Force monster in your graveyard. You can send this face up card along with one face up the Material Lord and the Spiritual Lord you control to the graveyard to special summon one Arcana Force EX the Light Roller from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Based on the Light Ruler's effect text, I believe that there would need to be an added clause that ignores the summoning condition, otherwise this card wouldn't even work. The EX monsters remain the absolute best Arcana Force monsters in the entire catalog. Unfortunately, the Light Ruler is the lesser of the two, but still a good option to have a way to cheat out from anywhere. But what about the mentioned Material and Spiritual Lord cards? Well, they're both cards that are similar in nature. The Material Lord is a continuous trap card that can only be activated when a level 4 or lower Arcana Force monster is in your graveyard. And the Spiritual Lord is a continuous trap card that can only be activated when a level 5 or 6 Arcana Force monster is in your graveyard. That's all, folks. These are the final anime Arcana Force cards, and as Destiny would suggest, all good things must come to an end. And that's exactly what happened. I'm so glad I wasted two spots in my deck for an activation condition with no payout. They might as well have the effect text of Share the Pain. For no effect. Sartorius has 12 more cards in his anime exclusive arsenal, unrelated to the Arcana Force archetype, but much like them, all revolving around coin toss effects. Going back to monsters, Knight of Pentacles is a level 3 Earth Warrior effect monster with 1000 attack and defense with a coin toss on summon effect. If heads, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. If tails, this card cannot attack. It also has a continuous secondary effect that if this card is attacked, it's destroyed at the end of the damage step. It's almost poetic in a sense. There isn't a single redeeming quality about this card, but we still chose to play it in our deck. The artwork isn't cool, like what am I looking at? Someone call the men in black. Getting back to planet Earth, does anyone remember Cup of Ace? Because I remember how so many players swore by this card until we all realized that it was just as awful as Arcane of Force. But there were actually three more cards that coincided with the theme of this Ace Relic. Ace of Sword is a normal spell card and when activated you can target one face-up monster on the field and flip a coin. If heads, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the targeted monster's attack. If tails, you take damage equal to the targeted monster's attack. I could take it or leave it. I'll be taking it straight into my gimmicky burn deck and leaving it out of anything else, including the shoebox, to avoid any potential fire hazards. Really not much else to say on this. Ace of Wand is a normal trap card that can only be activated when a monster is destroyed by a card effect. Toss a coin. If heads, the controller of the destroyed monster gains life points equal to the total attack of the destroyed monster. If tails, the controller takes damage equal to the total attack of the destroyed monsters. I'm not too sure about this one. You either get a massive burn effect or you cause yourself to lose to time because you just doubled your opponent's life points. I guess this plus mirror force with second coin toss and pray that you get one of the two coin tosses right. Not much more to say on this card either. Pentacle of Ace is a normal spell card that to everyone's surprise has a coin toss upon activation effect. If heads, draw one card and gain 500 life points. If tails, your opponent gains that effect. Uninspired. It's Cup of Ace, but I dislike it more because there's life point gaining instead of more draw potential. Somehow, Arrow Mage continued to get support when they didn't even exist at this point. Let's move away from these Ace cards. Selection of Fate is a normal spell card, and when activated, your opponent selects one random card in your hand. If it is a monster card, special summon it. Set all your back row, then activate this, and get a free monster. No, that's not the meta way of doing things, but we're also presumably playing Arcana Force, so we're not exactly in the tosses of a meta tournament. So it's good for what it is. Frankly, I'm shocked that there wasn't a coin toss effect that decided which player's side of the field the monster would go to, so I'll take it. Next is Decisive Power of 
Absolute Destiny. What a mouthful. It's a normal trap card that has you declare one monster card name. If a card with the declared name is in your opponent's deck, special summon it in attack position to their side of the field. If this were a spell card of any variety, I would love it. Because it's a trap, I only kind of tolerate it. Forcing an opponent's monster out of the deck, especially something like a hand trap that has no business being on the field, is a real Sigma move. If you're on the grind set, then you understand. Non-once per turn goes hard if you happen to open multiples, stripping away duplicates of hand traps. And if you're in a mirror match, then you also have the knowledge of other potential monster names to call out to force out of the deck. This is especially funny if the deck you're facing has a known Garnet monster. Don't be fooled though, it's still a trap card, and the same argument can be made about Emperor's Staff, another normal trap card that forces your opponent to draw one card. This turn, cards you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. So, maybe a bit better than Decisive Power, as this is going to help get around any Lightning Storms, Gekis, or other mass destruction effects, which is really nice. Your opponent is fully reliant on Banishing and or Battle Destruction. Depending on what your end board looks like, that may not even be a viable option for them. The card is good, and I'm just glad we've gotten away from coin flips. I don't have a good transition to the next card, so it's Vision, a normal spell card that has you draw one card and reveal it, then shuffle it into your deck. Once during this duel, if the selected card or a card with the same name is played, inflict 1000 damage to your opponent. The most convoluted burn card to ever be. I mean, it's a quirky response if you happen to draw the Ash Blossom that your opponent is about to use. Aside from that, you're almost guaranteed the burn damage if you draw one of your archetype-specific cards that you're more than likely to activate. I'm just not sure why you'd run this. There are better 1000 point burn cards, but even those aren't getting played. The future of burn cards looks bleak, much like Future Vision, a normal spell card that can only be activated while your opponent controls a face-up monster. Excavate cards from the top of their deck until you pick up a monster card. If it is the same type as the monster on your opponent's side of the field, your opponent gains 1,000 life points and all cards that were picked up return to their deck in the same order. What what are we doing here? What was the goal of this? I can assure you whatever is trying to be done is not worth it. Nothing happens if the monster is a different type, so this might as well be ruled as slow playing. Matter of fact, that's probably exactly what this was meant to do, and I have no respect for such dirty tricks. Some people are just addicted to wasting other people's time, like my ex-wife. We need an intervention, like Intervention of Fate, a normal spell card which is live when your opponent summons a monster. You can send this card from your hand to the graveyard to activate one normal spell card from your hand. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure how this would work as far as turn priority goes, because normal spell cards don't really respond to game actions. But all I heard was Regeki on on my opponent's turn, and that's all I needed to hear. I'll take your entire stock! Necro Sacrifice is a normal spell card that has you select one level 5 or higher monster in your hand. Special summon monsters from your graveyard to your opponent's side of the field equal to the number of tributes required to normal summon that monster. During this turn, you can normal summon the selected monster without tributing. That's a unique effect, so I'm automatically inclined to believe that it's good. In the context of Arcana Force, I could see this as an easier means of getting the world on board to get the world lock started, and in combination with Doom Scythe, we have an effective method to get monsters to the graveyard to summon to our opponent's board. In good Yu-Gi-Oh, however, maybe we put some kind of stun monster on the opponent's field, like Ra's Disciple, which at that point, the high-level monster that we summon is irrelevant, because our opponent is now locked out of their extra deck. There's a lot of potential with a card like this. Sartorius' final card is Suit of Sword X, a normal spell card, and we're back to coin flipping. If heads, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. If tails, destroy all monsters you control. Nope, not gonna happen. I don't care if I'm gifted the power to control destiny tonight and can flip heads without fail. I'm still going to play Lightning Storm or Regeki. Needless to say, I hate this card, but I am genuinely surprised that Sartorius came through with some actual heat in his anime exclusive cards. Would Arcana Force become tier one with these archetypal and generic additions? No, nothing could make that happen other than removing any trace of coins from their effects. But for what they are, there aren't many bad things I could say about them. Can Serena, Sartorius' younger sister, follow up with cards that are just as good? With 15 anime exclusives, I'd say she has a pretty good shot.
Starting with her spirit monsters, which side note are not actual spirit monsters, Magic Mirror Spirit Asogi is a level 6 light fiend effect monster with 1500 attack and 2500 defense. And Magic Mirror Spirit Nayuta is a level 6 light fiend effect monster with 2600 attack and 1400 defense. And when these monsters are normal summoned, you can special summon the opposite mirror spirit from your graveyard. On a tribute summon, I can't say that I'm blown away by these effects. It at least recovers the disadvantage from hard tribute summoning immediately, so long as you have the opposing monster set up in your graveyard, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. We can do better. Silver Spirit Sakeo is a level 4 light fairy effect monster with 600 attack and 800 defense, and Silver Spirit Okeo a level 3 light fairy effect monster with opposing stats. And when these monsters are summoned by any means, you can special summon the opposite Silver Spirit from your graveyard. Simply taking away the need for a tribute summon and being inclusive of special summoning has made two exponentially better monsters with the exact same effect. Along with Valhalla Hall of the Fallen and some generic mill cards, you have a respectable swarming strategy at your disposal. With these two being inarguably better than the mirror spirit monsters, the fact that they also got two support cards is just adding salt to the wound. Mirror Bind is a normal trap card that can only be activated if you control a face-up Silver Spirit Okayo and Silver Spirit Sakeo when an opponent's monster declares an attack. Destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls with original attack equal to or less than the attack of the attacking monster. This is where my bar for expectations are set in terms of anime character battle traps. A tie to their signature theme or archetype and at least not word-for-word -word copying generic battle traps. That being said, the payoff is a bit too specific to have any consistency. What else you got? Mirror Call is a normal spell card that can only be activated if you control a face-up Silver Spirit Okayo and Silver Spirit Sakeo. Select one trap card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. I guess you can recover Mirror Bind with this, which I assume is the intended purpose, but there are also far more better trap cards to bring back. It's not terrible, I just need to know that you know that you're playing less than stellar cards. Let's get into some gimmicks, as is customary with GX cards. Full Moon Mirror is a continuous spell card, and while face up on the field, each time a monster on the field is destroyed, place one Full Moon counter on this card, max 10. If there are 10 Full Moon counters on this card, you can send it to the graveyard to activate one Infinite Fiend Mirror from your hand or deck. That's gonna take a while, I sure hope it's worth it. Infinite Fiend Mirror is a field spell card which can only be activated by the effect of Full Moon Mirror. So it's dead in hand and in deck unless you can stall for long enough. During the main phase, as a non-once-per-turn effect, while a player controls a Dark Creator, that player must special summon as many Dark Creator tokens as possible with the same level, type, attribute, attack, defense, and effects as that monster to their side of the field. If there is no Dark Creator on the field, destroy all Dark Creator tokens on the field. The jury's still out, and now we're adding more to the mess. Dark Creator is a level 10 Dark Fairy effect monster with 3000 attack and 1000 defense, and this card cannot be destroyed by battle or declare a direct attack. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict 700 damage to your opponent. Was it worth it? Was 10 destroyed monsters really worth beat stick tokens with a burn effect outclassed by a card that is old enough to drink legally? I shouldn't have to give you the answer to this pop quiz, but no! Are we sure there aren't any more cards from Sartorius because this is just painful to watch? No? Okay then. Buried Soul Talisman is a normal trap card that can only be activated during the turn two or more monsters you control were destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard. Destroy the monsters that attacked and destroy those monsters by battle, then special summon one level 5 or higher monster from your hand. Seems like an effective way to cheat out the Dark Creator, seeing that the Mirror Spirits have to be Tribute Summoned, so it's not as though she had that many options to begin with. For a Battle Trap, I'll give it a pass, and I feel like there's maybe something to be said about not requiring it to be activated specifically during the battle phase. On the subject of battle, Mirror Route is a normal spell card that allows one face-up monster you control with 1,000 or less attack to attack directly this turn. Compared to many of her other cards, this is fantastic. In any other scenario, saying this card is mediocre would be generous. I guess this is meant to pair with one of the Silver Spirit monsters, but I can't think of a situation that you'd be so desperate for a direct attack or even battle damage from either of them because they don't have any effects that trigger on battle. 
And spoiler, none of Serena's remaining cards make use of that direct battle damage either. Return Talisman is a continuous trap card that special summons a return token, fairy type, dark, level 2, with 1000 attack and defense, in defense position to your opponent's side of the field during their end phase if they did not summon a monster that turn. Why though? I think we had a card similar to this in the Duel Monsters episode, where the only argument I could make was crashing into the small tokens that you give your opponent if they have a massive monster that you absolutely cannot get rid of, just so you can get in some battle damage. Look, I'm all for not giving up until the last life point, but have some humility, just scoop, go to game two. If anything, Serena is just hurting Sartorius's chances of getting a passing grade, mirroring his success with anime cards in all of the wrong ways. That being said, we have another mirror card. Soul Mirror is a normal trap card that lets you special summon a monster from your graveyard by sending one monster you control to the graveyard. It's like a fun house with all of these mirrors making us look goofy. This is fine, best suited for swapping out a weak monster for a strong one, and that's about it. So if you can't make that happen, don't activate this card until you can. Or you can just use flat out recovery cards with no catch to make better plays. We need to redirect to some more exciting cards. Silver Spirit Redirection is a counter trap card that negates the effect of an opponent's effect monster that targets one monster you control and banishes that effect monster. It resembles a halfway decent counter trap card, until you realize that most monsters that you or your opponent want to target are immune to said targeting, and the others, while well, you don't necessarily care about. Banishing the negated monster is kind of nice, so I can at least give credit for that, but this card is only redirecting us back to early to mid 2000s. Never have I ever been so excited to be almost done with a character. There was nearly nothing even remotely worthwhile in Serena's catalog of anime exclusives, so I'm happy to say that we've reached her final card. Mirror Trap is a normal trap card that can only be activated during the turn your Tag Team Duel partner activated a normal trap card. Hold the phone! Tag Team Duel? That's not something you see in your average card effect. Well, actually any card effect. And if that card was sent to the graveyard after it resolved, activate that card immediately. So you get a double trap effect. Not as though there are many normal trap cards that you can get a double use of by activating back to back, but cool. I'm more so interested in the tag team duel clause. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first card effect text, not only in this season or series, but in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh that can specifically be activated during a tag team duel which is probably why we will never see it in the physical game. Serena at least ends on a high note, but only because of her final card's bizarre nature, as opposed to what it actually does. With the last card down, you know what that means. It's time for the patent pending Purple Pineapple Grading Scale, where I take the total number of cards covered in this week's episode and get a percentage based on the number of cards that I want to see be imported to the physical game. Anything 70% or above is a passing grade. Of the 37 cards covered in this week's episode, Sartorius and Serena get a 54%, with 20 cards that I think are worthy of a physical print. When it comes to anything that involves Arcana Force, they are always destined to fail. This is a missing person alert. Purple Pineapple, age 27, this is a missing person alert. Purple Pineapple, age 27, this is a missing person alert. Purple Pineapple, age 27, last seen on 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 on.